Today on Sister to Sister, Amy, you're going to love this. Okay. We are going to learn how to be a set apart woman. And also, are you a people pleaser? I bet I kind you of are. <laughs> my favorite question ever, it changed my life, is a tidy house, the proof of a wasted life? Uh-oh. <laughs> Stay tuned, Sister to Sister. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. If you have tuned into our show for the first time, you made a great choice. We are five opinionated, strong, intelligent, beautiful women. We come to life's questions from a biblical standpoint. And I'm gonna dive right in, you're gonna like this. The first question here, is it okay to attend a church that changes the definition of marriage to include same-sex couples? I would say it is not the church's decision to change marriage or describe or tell us what marriage should look like. Right. It is actually God, according to scripture, it is our creator, our designer. He said, here is Adam and Eve. He said, now go out, reproduce, recreate. This is what I want marriage to look like. This is, so it's really out of the church's hands to decide what marriage should look That's like. Good. Yeah. It's that scriptural. Was excellent. That, yeah. was, that, was, that was fantastic. Good. That was excellent. The only thing that I um, add to that is from the, the, the latter part of the question says, would you attend? Right. And I would um, admonish someone not to, and this is my reason why, because if someone is willing to compromise in that area, then I am concerned about you watching for my soul. You can't use scripture to make yourself relevant. You use it right. to promote God. You use it to draw people to Jesus. And when you do that, when you draw people unto him, when, then he's lifted up. He'll draw those people unto himself. You, you know what I'm saying? And so I, I really feel that when you sit in a house where somebody is willing to compromise on every level like that, you know, today, um, because it's relevant or because um, I don't want the persecution that right, comes with right, it, I'll right. shift. Then you are in a place that they'll compromise with your own and soul. And I was just going to say, I don't think you should attend any church where you don't agree with the theology. When we were looking for a church, when we moved back to the area, one of the first things we did was go to the websites of churches to find out what were their statements of belief, because that's, that's very right. important. Yes. That's that right. we're aligned and that they could have the greatest children's ministry or the greatest building or whatever, but if we don't have that alignment of the beliefs, then then we cannot be at that church. Right. Yet, right. God, yeah, yet God might be calling you to be salt and light, you know, in a generation mm -hmm. that has changed. So if is it okay? It might be for a season in well, your life point, to uh, to go to that church. You've been be involved. Be You've developed relationships, you uh, know the people, you have um, developed friendships with them so that God may be calling you to be salt and light. And in this one area, there are areas where churches may be in error or may have difficulty mm -hmm. discerning what God's will is and what his word is. You can be a light, I think, in that church. So right. I think it depends on the person and their calling as right. well. And but guard your watching. own spirit, right. though. Guard right. your soul. But there are people mm -hmm. watching, I'm sure, who mm -hmm. have that this exact issue because their mm -hmm. church is doing same-sex marriage. So we, we appreciate you I listening to us. I would say, too, if, if they're having questions, say, can you show me in Scripture where it, it's saying what you're saying? Right. Show me according to Scripture why you're changing that doctrine or that theology. And right. let them... And, and get the facts out on the table. Right. I mm -hmm. love that we're able to tackle the tough questions here on Sister to Sister, but I'm gonna go to something else that's about wasting time. <laughs> Is a clean house proof that you're wasting time. Whoa! <laughs> Amy, can I uh, jump yeah. in? Because oh, you can this jump article, in. I'm not even kidding. I just spit. I'm so happy. <laughs> that it changed my life because here's this there's this pressure that I've got to be this highly productive person, but I've got to have this perfective, amazing house. <laughs> Okay, you can't do it all. Mm -hmm. And so this article freed me. You cannot have perfect order and perfect productivity. Well, what article? What are you talking about? The, the article, article that, yeah. was, with that this. was with this. Right. Okay, listen, and so what, this is another quote. Is a clean house proof of a wasted life? Not at all. But a tidy house isn't necessarily evidence of a well-lived life either. Yeah. 
And my mother oh, uses wow. the quote, you know, where there is no oxen, the barn's there clean. clean right. So are you doing anything effective if your barn's so clean? Right. But I do have to say there are people that are very good stewards of their home. That's yeah. what's... And they're time. My this grandmother time loved question. the clean, but she also right. loved to have company. Yes. And I'm thinking about uh, Luke 10, where it says Martha opened up her home to Jesus. Right. I mean, we forget that right. Martha right. opened up her home. Yes. But then Jesus told her, Martha, you're worried about so many things. Don't worry about your, just get it done. What you can, you can. But remember, open your, not your home, but not only your home, but your heart to Jesus. Sit I, at Jesus' feet. I think what, I think the thing that we get caught up too much in is that we're like, okay, we can't have a small group at our house unless our house is perfect. That's or right. we can't right. have our kids' yeah. friends over unless everything is perfectly in line. Right. And anyone that's been at my house or knows me in any way, shape, or form knows that is not my house. Yes. So if the tidy house means you didn't waste your life, I did not waste my right. life, okay? Right. Right. I just right. don't think it's <laughs> worth living a life, having a house, and not having your kids' friends over, not having right. friends over because you're worried that there's dishes in the sink. My house is gonna have dishes in the sink. Come on over. If that's a problem for you, don't come over. Oh boy, this is a good <laughs> question. I don't like question. to vacuum. Any oh prayer. my gosh. <laughs> well, I think that a tidy house is good because then you are less stressed in your that's own true. environment. So that's I like true. that. Yeah, um, but also, do. I'm a people pleaser. So I'm trying to please everybody <laughs> by having tidiness. But I want to ask you, are you a people pleaser? And is it hard for you to say no? And is it harder to say no in the church? You people please are people. I, I'm most definitely not a, a people pleaser. Oh, so. oh, 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 wow. <laughs> um, and and I feel it's it's very liberating um, to to not be. Now, was I always that way? No. I think that it's it's a process. Um, I think that you begin as you begin your journey with the Lord. Sometimes there's mixed messages as to what makes me a good believer, what makes me, even in life, taking church out of it, what makes me a good human acceptable being, you know? And um, I think as you begin to walk in your own truths, hopefully your truths are coming from the scripture, that that, de that tears away that mass, that deception. It, it removes that demonic veil that causes me to walk in a, a space where I have to please people. I need your affirmation. Mm -hmm. No, I am affirmed by God. Yeah, I have been God approved pleaser, by God. You are a God well, pleaser. I, see, my problem, I actually have a worse problem being a people pleaser. I'm a me pleaser. My selfish, oh, I, I, I don't worry about what other people think to the point where I'm like, well, what do I think? And what, what's best for me? And you I think that's worse. You from the same but mother. I, I think that's <laughs> worse. <laughs> you do are exactly Another same. mother, same father. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I need to get a little bit of the balance of what you guys yeah. have, not being a people pleaser so much, but, yeah. but, you know, not being so harsh with people, not mm -hmm. being so, yeah. you know, well, it's all about me, right. you know? Yeah, I am naturally a people pleaser because I, I want to have people Peace. I want to get along and I want to be your cheerleader for your event and I want to go to all your stuff, but it will flipping wear you out yes, being a people yes, pleaser. Yeah. And so ultimately I have to live for the audience of one. If yes. I say no, it doesn't mean I don't love you. Mm -hmm. But when we say yes to something, we're saying no to something else. Right. And that might be our family, our kids, or our marriage, or right. our time with the Lord, but we have to be very careful what we're saying right. yes to, really. Well, I like that. I like that. Are you a people pleaser? Uh, I, I've learned by the things I've suffered. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, Proverbs says the fear of man is a snare, but mm -hmm. to delight in the Lord is safety. So I, I think there's a point of balance where you don't fear man, but you don't want to offend them. The Bible talks about, you know, if you have a weaker Christian, don't offend them. Don't do things That's around right. them right. that may cause an offense to the gospel of That's Christ. Right. That's right. So we have to be careful that it's not like Corey says, my will, what I want to do, but will I be an offense? So I think there's a difference between fearing what men may think about you mm -hmm. versus offending someone because they're weaker or they're different in some way than you are. So I think 
think there is a balance, and I think I've learned that, especially getting older, you you become wiser and not as worried about oh, yeah. what people think right. because you're more right. secure in who you are as you grow older, I think. Right, it, but it I think that the That's question cool. also said, is it, it, when it's concerning the church, and is it okay to say no? And I, and honestly, with social media, everybody is doing everything. Yes. This one's at the zoo, this one's at this crusade. <laughs> and so then I tend to think, oh my gosh, I'm missing all this stuff. Oh, I can't yeah. do it all. Mm -hmm. And my husband, George, is my barometer for life now mm -hmm. because he accepted Jesus six years ago and our home is a place of rest. And mm -hmm. he'll say That's to good. me, That's it's good. okay to not Same do it now. all. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. okay to not do it all. I'll tell you that. And I have time for one person That's to good. tell me, mm -hmm. okay, what does it mean about setting apart? How, How are you set apart? Because our guest, our next guest, amazing. Mm -hmm. To do our best to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. To, and what I mean by that is that I, human nature automatically fights against God. And to be set apart is a, a term that we don't use a lot anymore in the Christian arena. And it used to be we would teach a lot about consecration, right. being set apart, being separate. Now we don't. We try to see how close can I live and mix in the world right. instead right. of how close can I be and walk with God and affect the world? That's good. And I think you're going to find out a lot more with our guest coming up right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Sister to Sister. You'll see a six sister with us. Ooh. We are so excited to have Leslie Ludy. She and her husband Eric have written 20 books together and you are a ministry across the nation. But tell me, why did you write Set Apart Woman? What's the deal? A turning point in my walk with God came when a question was challenged to my souls, the voice of God speaking to me, why are you just trying to fit me into your life when you should be building your life around me? Oh, amen. amen. And that question just changed. I began to look at every area of my life and say, am I truly set apart unto Christ, consecrated to him? My life is not my own. It's been bought with a price. Is that is the evidence of that being seen in every practical area of my life? Well, it's not your own because you have six kids. Do you think you're <laughs> Just right? saying. True. So, Leslie, the first chapter mm -hmm. is um, the divine invitation, and you talk uh, a lot about um, the secular influence in our mm -hmm. lives. Now, some people would say, you know, we need to be clued in to what's going mm -hmm. on in the world so that we know how to respond as Christians, but you seem to disagree with that. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I don't think it's bad to be aware of what's going on in the world, but I know that a lot of times Christians, myself included, can use, well, I just need to be in touch with the culture as an excuse or a justification. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in a movie theater several years ago, and I was there to see, you know, a chick flick, romantic comedy with my husband. But as the previews came on the screen, I was thinking, wow, I'm being exposed to things that are so ungodly, so oh, yeah. opposite of the nature of God, and I'm just drinking it in and watching it, and I'm justifying it the whole way. It's like, well, this is just the culture. I just need to, it's God knows I don't agree with it. But as I begin to look to those things for my fulfillment and say I have to watch every TV show and see all these movies and be connected with everything going on on the Internet, I began to develop more of a hunger for the things of the world than the things of God. So he really began to convict me of that. Not that you just go live in a, a hermit's cabin in the woods right. and you just mm -hmm. close your eyes to everything, but that you don't look to those things for your fulfillment and your satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Psalm 16 says, in his presence is the fullness of joy. So I began to say, okay, God, let that be proven true in my life and learn to turn to him and his word and prayer and growing in him for my fulfillment as opposed to just whatever Hollywood came out with next. Do, oh, do you good. think it's kind of exciting mm -hmm. though that there's some of these great Christian movies coming out? Like we yes. just went and saw Woodlawn mm -hmm. recently right. and, oh, yeah. and The War Room mm -hmm. and I just like, I'm loving these movies. Very exciting. And I think it's it's a medium that God can really use when, right. it's, when it's for his glory. And, and that's kind of the criteria that I, I use for myself. Is this pointing me to him? Is this teaching more, me more about him? Is this revealing more of his nature? Um, can I become more like him by watching this? And, and there's, there are things out there that are very edifying. Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Corey, that was good. And mm -hmm. You know, your, your book talks about, and I think it's revolutionary, that we be offensive to our culture when all of us are trying to blend in and win the souls yeah. to Christ. Can yeah. you explain what you yeah. mean by that? 
Well, I remember a woman telling me one time, you know, your message on being set apart for Christ is too radical because right. if women li live different lives uh, than the world around them, then everyone's going to be felt judged by them and no one's going to, you know, be drawn to the gospel. I remember a quote by Catherine Booth. She was one of the co-founders of the Salvation Army, and she said, when the world and the church can jog comfortably together, then you know something is wrong. We have this idea that the, the way people will be drawn to our churches and drawn to Christianity is if we're a lot like the world and we have all the bells and whistles that the world has, but what, if you look throughout Christian history, what really has drawn people to the church is when they see something in the lives of those right. who follow Christ mm -hmm. it says, wow, they have something better to live for than all these temporary distractions. So not that you offend people in your own mm -hmm. uh, rude way, you know, go up and just get in somebody's <laughs> face, right, yeah. not but, tell them what to do. <laughs> but not to be afraid to say, one of the most powerful illustrations of this in my life was hearing about my husband's experience when he was a young missionary. They were on a missions team in downtown New Orleans during Mardi Gras, so it was a lot Wildness. of a lot of craziness. And they were carrying a cross on Bourbon Street, and he did not want to really carry the cross. He didn't mind kind of standing near it, but he didn't want to hold it because the, whoever was holding it was getting yelled at and cussed at and beer thrown on them. And finally, he made the decision to to hold on to that cross. And when he when he made that choice of saying, "I'm not going to just stand near it. I'm going to cling to it. I'm going to hold on to it," everyone oh in gosh. that whole street said. They knew he was with Jesus, and they yelled and they threw things, but he said it was like this electrifying feeling because he crossed the line and he made a declaration, this is where I stand. Oh, I just good. got goosebumps. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. See, that's, are we in or are we all in? What? Right. what? Yeah. right. That's good. In your book, you had relayed to that as the power of the cross and the majesty mm -hmm. of the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you talk about setting apart, one of the things that comes to mind for me is the part that prayer pay, pray, Ugh, oh, yeah. the part that prayer yeah. plays in that. Yes. And the thing of it is, is that as we move forward in the things of God, mm -hmm. I believe that prayer is definitely our catalyst. It is our spiritual digestive tract. Mm -hmm. But when we come up with excuses, mm -hmm. because it's not a mm -hmm. convenience, it mm -hmm. is work. Mm -hmm. And you speak about that mm -hmm. in your book. Can you yeah. share some of that with us? Prayer was always sort of a, something that I did, It was, but it was more of an afterthought to my ministry life. It's like, I'm out there, I'm speaking, I'm writing, I'm doing all these things for God, and I would pray about those things. But I came to a point where God was saying, you need to, this needs to be your primary work, praying and coming mm -hmm. before me and letting me uh, fill you with myself so that you're equipped to do what I've called mm -hmm. you to do. Mm -hmm. So it was not a practical time in my life when God convicted me. I had several <laughs> young children at home. I had book deadlines. I, we were pastoring a church. It just, it didn't seem to really fit. And yet we just said, we're going to make this a priority. Seek first his kingdom mm -hmm. and he'll give you strength for everything else you're called to do. And so it it didn't mean necessarily eight hours a day in prayer, but really making right. prayer a cornerstone and not just an afterthought, and it, it changed everything. Yeah, I can see that on her. Yes. Yeah. Like We've had lots of authors here, but I see something different about you, and you're young, and you just have such a heart for the Lord. Mm, I'm so you. grateful to be peace, sitting beside you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's yeah. what happens mm -hmm. in, in, when you're in the presence of God, really, yes. and you do spend that time. It was there. really amazing because things that used to take, that used to be so difficult and so frustrating, when I would go to God first and be equipped and be right. filled by That's Him, right. The things that were so hard before, all of a sudden I was equipped and anointed to do those wow. things. And people always ask me, you know, how do you have all these children and do right. all these things? And it, it's really not me. It's the grace of God. But if I ever start to get too busy for prayer, yeah. I, it starts to dry up. I, I'm a busy mom once told me, I'm too busy not, not to, pray. to pray. And right. it changed that. my life. That's, I, right. I, I that's, really, right. that's so true. And, and whenever, really, is there ever a practical time? Right. I mean, no. when, you're never going to find that time where you're like, oh, all of a sudden, it's practical. Yeah, you know? exactly. so what, this is what I love about your book because you challenge us that being being believers and being people in leadership, and I want to leave room for her to have her question, but one of the challenges is that we can so begin to speak Christianese and we can begin to even use scripture in a sense that makes us relevant. Mm -hmm. And we're not really living even yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. Like this is the message I'm gonna preach mm -hmm. to you yeah. today because that's the thing, that's the buzzword, yeah. that's the buzz message. Mm -hmm. But that's not what my life really yeah. is portraying. Yeah. And there are people out there as leaders that we don't have prayer lives. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't mm -hmm. even believe everything that we're teaching. Mm -hmm. And so that is a challenge mm -hmm. and prayer changes that. Yes. Absolutely. And, and this prayer life that you have wasn't just 
it didn't just happen overnight because mm -hmm. like me, when I'm my younger self, I wanted to be on Broadway yes. and get everybody oh. saved. Yes. That was my goal. I was going to go to Broadway and get everybody saved. You Which, could do it, Amy. It was cute, right? <laughs> but you had the same experience as a, a Christian artist. Can you share that? Yeah, all my life growing up, I wanted to be a Christian musician. And so my parents at the age of 15, I had a producer, I had my demo wow. album, I had my, <laughs> you know, my eight by 10 glossy photo. And it was all about my own glory. I wanted people to notice my gift and notice oh, me. Wow. And I remember oh, going, wow. yeah, I went yeah. to this Christian music festival and everyone was just vying for position and elbowing their way to the top oh, and trying yeah. to, and finally I realized, wow, this is, this is not about his glory. This is about my glory. And the, the scripture where John the Baptist says, I must decrease, decrease. so that he would increase, that was life-changing for me because I thought, it's not that God can't use our unique gifts and skills and talents, but only when we're willing to get completely out of the way. Exactly. And that was the process that God led me through. It's, it's not about you. It's not about people seeing you. Are you willing, if they don't even know your name, that yes. they would see me? See, this oh, is wow. what I love Amen. about your book. Even right. as you're yeah. sharing, you are giving us the revelation that God has given you, and mm -hmm. you, you are always able to refer back to the scripture that you got the revelation right. from. Right. And right. that is something that we need in the body of Christ because we're able to share a lot of quotes. We're able to share what somebody else said, somebody else's revelation, but we don't go back to the foundation. We have to redig those wells. We are not always able to come back and say, this is where I got that from. Mm, and you yes. do that so well in here. Well, yeah. well I just want to address what Amy <laughs> talked about earlier. The time waster thing is a clean house wasting time that we should be praying. But <laughs> yeah. I tend to spend too much time on Facebook, Twitter, yes. Pinterest, yeah. is that bad? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> not always. You know, what, what you were saying is so true. We need to get back to the Word of God. We need to yes. know the Word of God. It needs mm -hmm. to become the foundation for That's all right. of our decisions. And I think one of the things the enemy can use is social media to distract yes. us from that. Yes. It doesn't yes. mean they're uh -oh. always bad. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, on, too, you, you? I'm on Facebook and I look at Pinterest from time to time, but I just, I know a lot of women who tell me I spend more time on social media than I do in prayer and the word of God. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. you know, when it's gotten out of its place, when you're more yeah, well drawn said. to that well than said. to the presence well of God. Then you know it's out of its place. Well, I try to do them both, and yes. and um, in the morning I go to my word first, mm -hmm. and my social media second. <laughs> <laughs> you are a social butterfly. It, it can be a great tool. It can be a great great way to encourage others to share about Christ. Right. So it's not it's not bad in of itself. Right. She does. Right. She does. Right. But right. but make sure we're first things first, like you right. said. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to hope that you would find this book. We're going to have a have the information on our website too. And this little girl, Leslie. Ludi has really and truly changed our lives. And if you can just find the number at the bottom of the screen, there's a number that in case you need prayer, in case you need to talk to us, someone at the other side, other end of that phone is there for you. And stay right there because we're going to wrap this up right after this. That was so good. We like to end sister to sister with a scripture. Today is one of my favorites in 1 Peter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you mm -hmm. may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Basically, sisters, we are set Apart. We are set apart. And I love this book so much. Thank you. Can Thank you, you give us a clothing thought? Well, I think with set apartness, it is so important to realize it doesn't come through striving and trying and human willpower. It comes through surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. So if there are people watching who feel, I, it's too late for me, I can't be set apart. It's about going to him, laying your life at his feet and saying, Lord, I'm yours. Use me however you want. Every area of my life, I turn it over to you. That's right. And you've done that and you've illustrated that so well in this book. Yes. We just love it so much. Was it difficult to write? It was very difficult to write. I was convicted the entire way through. I cried <laughs> the entire way through. It's, I'm not, I have not arrived at, at what's in this book, but it's constantly challenging me. God's saying, come away, come deeper, come farther. Well, I sure mm -hmm. hope that this has challenged you. Every time on Sister to Sister, we hope that we challenge you. We end with this, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of one sister sharpen the other. We'll see you next time.